Hello, viewers, slash, probably no one. Um, I'm going to do Advent of Code. Part of it, at least. Um, and uh, I'm I'm not very good at Advent of Code. It's not, I, I, I like to sort of think that I am, but I'm definitely not. Um, it's, it's, it's the sort of thing that I struggle with, um, because it's, um, it's sort of like tricky problems that require a bit of thinking about, and that's not in, in the domain of programming or logic or anything like that. I'm not particularly good at those things because I, I tend to want to get stuck in with a sort of half-baked idea that I think is cool. And, um, then I get stuck and, and kind of go back and forth and just never never finish it uh, or at least take a long time to get through it um, and the root of this is really that I don't really plan or research enough before I start coding these sorts of things um, and as someone who hasn't done a lot of these sorts of problems it doesn't respond well to improvisation at least not for me so I'm setting myself a little challenge uh, which is um i can own for, for each for each and these are the rules for each so advent of code has 25 days and each one has two challenges in it um and i'm going to do both of those and the time from when i start coding as like one of the sub challenges to when i to when i get the answer has got to be 30 minutes or less. So I'm going to start a timer. And if it goes over 30 minutes, I've, I've got to stop because I I failed at that point. I've got to do it in 30 minutes. I've got to write the code itself in 30 minutes. But I can plan and develop a, a sort of theory of the problem and a, a, the and a potential solution um, for as long as I like, you know, for days if I, if I would if I want to. Um, and so that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and write each one in half an hour. Um, but I can do as much planning as I like to get to the point where I can actually, you know, do that effectively. And that at least then I won't um, hopefully waste any more than half an hour on silly coding um, sort of labyrinths, labyrinths, is. Um, uh, but I'll still, uh, and it'll also teach me to do a bit more planning. So that's what I'm going to do. I've also got COVID, so um, uh, apologies for the slightly stuffy voice. So let's get into it. Um, I've read this one already. Day one, calorie counting. Brilliant. Um, and so uh, I'm going to just try and articulate my understanding of this problem so we've got this list here um and it's a list of integers with space with kind of spaces in between the lines um and each one of these represents a one elf and the elf is so th so this is one elf this is one elf, this one elf, and they each have like a pack of food and um, the food, the items of food have calories. And so this person has a total of 6,000 calories. This person is carrying a total of 4,000. This person carrying a total of 11,000. Um, and the task is to find the elf carrying the most calories. And how many calories is that elf carrying? So in this case, it's 24,000 um, because this fourth elf is carrying, you know, the sum of these three. So um, fine. It doesn't seem so complicated, but I'm going to develop an algorithm first because um, I... This is where I go wrong. So let's switch to Excaladraw, which I have paid for recently. It's quite good. 
Okay. So, yeah, that's better. So this is one, this is one, and this is the structure, right, of the data stream that we've got. And I guess we're going to get like many, many, many of these. And we need to find the elf with the most and the number of calories that's going. And these things have two parts. So I'm always like thinking, what's the second part going to be? And can I try and anticipate it? I don't think I can. Um, but I can at least try to not massively shoot myself in the foot. So if I was trying to design an algorithm for this, well, I would go as the line by line algorithm, I guess, or line by line sort of approach. You could go through line by line. Well, one easy way would be just to split on split the string on double new lines. You'd end up with a huge list, and then you go through each item and you generate the sum for each item. That would be that would have a very high um, you know, that would take a long time. It would have a lot of work, a lot of operations, a lot of memory. Um, and the these exercises often have a first part which is um, doable and a second part which is like, okay, now do it on significantly larger data or with a significantly more, you know, complex, computationally complex problem. So I'm going to try and do it efficiently, learning from my last attempt. Um, so we want to go through each one. Yeah. Want to go through each one, adding, keeping a, keeping a running total. So we want to keep a highest. Um, total scene and if we go through item by item we'd start off with 1000 then 2000 then 3000 then we'd no then we need to um we'd also need to have a running total right which would be the same up to here. This would be 4,000, this would be 5,000, and then, no, actually, I've got that wrong. See, I'm already getting it wrong. 1,000, 3,000, 6,000. And this would be, this would zero back to, it's a bit big, isn't it? There we go. 6,000. Um, this will be 4,000, so it was zero back at this point. 5,000, 11,000, 7,000, 16, no. Fifteen thousand. Twenty-four thousand and then 10,000 here. And so the highest total would end up being four, no. <laughs> 6,000, this would be 6,000, 6,000, 11,000, 11,000, 15,000, 24,000. 10,000, no, 24,000 still. So, so essentially what we're doing is we're going through each item here, keeping track of the running total of each elf, which then resets on whenever we see an empty line. 
and then also keeping track of what the highest total we've seen is across all, all of the list. And in this way, it's going to take essentially it's going to essentially scale with the number of I'm not a big O person, but I think it's O N. Maybe I'll learn to become an O a big O person. Um, yeah, because we only have to compare it against the last item and yeah so that's fine it's it's linear so that's good but the second one is definitely not going to be that simple so i'm not going to try and imagine that am i ready to start coding is there anything here more that i can do in my planning stage i can get an idea of how long the data is going to be okay Pretty long, but not infinite, obviously. Uh, and it's got many digits. They're all integers. It's all fine. <laughs> Nothing weird here. Uh, okay. So my algorithm's got to look like go through each element. Um, if it's, that's too much like code. I'm not going to do that. Um, but go through each element. If it's an, an, an empty line, how am I going to go through each element without splitting it into a list? See, that's what I'm, that's the sort of thing I avoid. How am I going to go through each element without splitting everything into a list, which could be expensive? Because it, typically, this is the sort of thing that I would jump into and start coding. And and probably many coders would be fine with that. They'd be able to re rethink if they needed to. Um, I tend to I tend to make mistakes with this. And that's what I'm trying to get out of the habit of. So if I was trying to, if I didn't want to split into a list, you know, I could just go through character by character. I mean, that wouldn't be so bad to write that manually. I'm just fairly sure there's a Python utility I can use. Yeah, I can just go through character by character. Now, see, this is, now I'm starting to get, now I'm starting to worry that I'm, that I'm, okay. All right, so let's say I'm going to split to a list first, but if I, if that is not practical in the second step, I'm, I'm going to instead go through just kind of character by character and extract the numbers or use a use a use a sort of fancy python kind of string scanner or something like that now i'll use a, there'll be a there'll be a string scanner in some sort of library somewhere i can use or i can go through character by character but i definitely don't need it for this first one because this string is not that long so I can just go through it item by item. Fine. Am I ready to code? I think I am. Let's get started. Ah, I've got to do the input thing as well. Okay. which means actually I can use the, I can read line by line. Let me look up the, let me look up the, 
the standard library for this. Python read line by line. This is going to get old. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If not line break file close. Okay. Great. I don't know why I'm being asked to log in. Okay. Now I'm definitely good to code. Let me open my text editor, shift across my documentation. Don't need that. And now I need to start a timer. Okay, let's go. No, don't want no, 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 I'm not cheating in that way. Okay. Um, while true, and I don't want that either. And I'm going to turn on type checking. Okay. Okay, and let's just check this works. No, obviously don't. Okay. Okay, that's good. Now, my approach is to go through each item in the sequence and track two variables running total, which will start off being zero, and highest total seen, which will start off being zero. Um, now I want to say if now, okay, I don't, I'm not an expert Python person, so I'm not like a hundred percent sure what, okay. So it's like an, a new a new line, a new line at the end of every line. What about if I trim or strip? Uh, actually, only if it's I could just say line equals line. Yeah. Okay. If line is empty, then running total equals zero. Otherwise, running total. Do we have that in Python? I actually don't know. Um, is that, and so we can then start to print line is OK. 
Okay. All right. We can actually, no, actually, we don't want to integerize an empty string. That doesn't work. Okay. Um, now, we want to also, at this point, say if running, we don't actually need that integer, if running total is greater than highest total seen. Highest total scene is running total. Don't think there's any problems with that. Okay. So we've got our answer, which should be this. But will it be? Let's take a look at me not sharing my screen correctly for some time. Okay. All right. That's um, five, five and a half minutes. Not too bad. All right. <laughs> So by the time you calculate the answer to the, these things are very wistful, aren't they? Um, they already realized that the elf carrying the most calories of food might eventually run out of snacks. To avoid the this unacceptable situation, the elves would instead like to know the total calories carried by the, see, this is, a, this is where they get you, carried by the top three elves carrying the most calories. That way, even if one of those elves runs out of snacks, they still have two backups. In the example above, the top three elves are the fourth elf, the third elf, and the fifth elf. The sum of the calories carried by these elves is 45,000. Find the top three elves carrying the most calories how many calories are those elves carrying in total? Okay, so we can just sum them up. All right, back to the drawing board then. <clears throat> I'll just pause my screen and pause my coughing at all. Okay, so running total is still fine. We still need that logic. Um, and this is the input. Let's make that. Uh, let's make this derived. Let's say that's derived. And this is derived as well. Highest total seen um, now needs to change because this gets us the highest, not the top three highest. So um, if we'd like to solve this, okay, here's, here's, here's the initial idea, which again, I'm suspicious of just because I'm, I've been hurt before, um, mostly by myself. Uh, so if we, if as we were going through highest total scene, We um, we we kept the previous. We it was like a no 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 no. What I was about to try is if we could just whenever we whenever we change the previous total like here, whenever we go from 6,000 to 11,000, we just sort of, um, uh, at that point, kind of keep the 6,000, but that wouldn't work 
because um because we might this the second highest or the third highest might never be actually the highest in the case where let's say we had um uh let's say 60,000 1000 5000 1000 5000 2000 so in this case we'd end up with 61000 as the highest total seen and we never actually peak that we never actually see we never actually end up with these so that approach that approach doesn't work um and we now also can't just take the peak of the running total number because if we end up with um let's say one let's say 60,000 1000 um well just the same thing again then the running total would start off being 60,000 so we'd store that then 61,000 we'd store that and that's actually not a total of any elf no elf has a total of 60,000 here that's just a number we've passed through in the running total so you know they always get you well they always get me i feel like these problems are designed to trick me personally um all right so we need to kind of just totally rethink um so at this point we could instead of instead of doing it whenever we get a blank line or an end of file let me write that down we need to store so this would be six uh, yeah we need to store six thousand here well this actually isn't it so let's say like um let's say this is a a list of oh okay sorry so we start off with like none or like zero 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 that's what we kind of initialize with and but like let's just put that there even though it wouldn't actually be set there and then we end up with six thousand zero zero Six thousand four thousand zero eleven thousand six thousand four thousand twenty twenty four thousand and then we get rid of four thousand here and then here we get 24,000, which is the end of file case, 24,000, 11,000, and 10,000. So we need to kind of only operate at the empty line or the end of file. So that's one change we need to do. And the second thing is, how do we actually achieve this result where we, we've essentially got... Um, uh, we're going from int 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 or it's kind of like we've sort of got this signature and we're going from we want to just discard the lowest one and add the highest one 
which we could do by taking the minimum and checking whether the number we've got is higher than the minimum and then and then if if the minimum and then removing the minimum but only only one of the minimums because there could be a duplicate So in the case where like, let's say we've got three, in the case where we've got 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, we might end up with, um, you know, sort of, if we, if we then went here and we, and we ended up with a, with a list of 1,000 and one, well, actually, if it was, let's add another one. Let's say by the end here, when we need to add 2,000, we've got 1,000, 1,000 and 1,000, and we wanna get 2,000, 1,000, 1,000. So we can't just remove any item which is which is 1,000. We've got to only remove one. So very important we remember to do that. So the rough algorithm here is take the minimum, remove one copy of the minimum, add our new item if it's lower. If it's lower than our new number. Okay. Fine. Okay. Is there anything? Is there anything I'm likely to get wrong here? Is there anything I'm going to get confused or mess up? We've got the blank line or end of file. Um, So we should we should have a, like a function for this. So in general, our plan should be one. Implement. Um, store new running. Store new. I score if needed. Alter function to only process on it on UF or blank. And if we've done that, oh, and like change prints. If we've done that, then we'll be good. I think taking the minimum of a list in Python is fine. I'm sure there's a way. I might just Google it since we've got some, we may as well Google it now rather than in the, in the coding part. Um, I don't know if you could take the minimum of a tuple. Ah, seems over, over overcomplicate but I, it might be useful to learn um and removing one copy of something we well, can't remove from a tuple anyway i don't think because they're i think they're that kind of structure i don't know actually to be honest um Complexity is still pretty low, I think. Let's use a list. List will be easier. Okay. So um, 
Python list min. Fine. And Python remove matching item single matching item. Okay, I think I'm good to go. Same input, right? Yes. All right, let's get back to the code. My browser over here. Got my plan all sorted. We get my timer going. Okay. I might need to implement that in a different place. I don't actually know. Um, and let me just comment this out and Okay, that's weird. Oh, that's why. Hmm. I've been lied to. It's probably on some sort of import or it's a function or something.
Okay, what are we getting here? Yeah, that's fine. I can deal with that. Okay, let's try a more realistic one. Okay, and we should end up with this, but with a 50 gone and with this one on the end. Okay, perfect. That's that done. Now, my next step is to alter the function to only process on end of file and blank. So here's where I want to do it. And I should get the same I'm doing it in part one. Oh, well, who cares? I should get the same result. Well, I don't, turns out, because I've put this in the wrong order. Yeah, that's what I remember. In fact, let me, um, I won't make a habit of this, but let me copy this into a new one and reverse this all the way back, which I can do doing this. Okay, and then part two. Okay, I get the same result, which is a good sign. And now instead, I want to say I'm storing uh, highest, highest totals seen. Let's make it a little smaller. And then I want to store new high score if needed. And it probably edits in place anyway, but I, I don't I don't want to think about that right now. I need to have this function at the top seemingly. Which is fine, I can do that. Or well, actually maybe I don't. I'm getting distracted now. Um int line no way running total. And it, yeah, it does need to be at the top. Okay. And now I want to have this here. Okay. Right. And then I want to sum these at the end. which should get me the right answer. Moment of truth. Let me reshare my screen, reshare my browser. Okay. All right, that's day one. Oh, what's the timer? Uh, that was 21.50 timer left, so just over eight minutes. So um, that one survived, but uh, still kind of, uh, well, I'm going to need to be faster anyway. I'll end the recording here. Thanks all.